Good morning. It is Tuesday, the, I want to say, 6th of September, 5th of September, 2023, and this is Floss Tube number two. Uh, welcome to Stitcher's Flock. My name is Tammy. I do have an actual macaw who is sitting over there eating breakfast. I will insert some footage here. If he's cooperative later, that is, I will insert some footage. Hello, Pickles. Hello, Pickles the bird. Not to talk. Okay. You don't talk. There you go. Good morning. You gonna be shy? Okay. Say hello. Say hello. No hellos. No hellos. If not, I do have a bird. His name is Pickles because sometimes he's a sweet bird and sometimes he's a sour bird. He is, however, our bird. He was my husband's first anniversary gift. Um, he is 18 years old this year. And if you own a bird, you know they are, especially a cause and above. A lifelong commitment and a perpetual toddler. And there are days with macaws that are much like stitching. And you just want to pull all your hair out. Luckily, he's being good today. So I do have a finish for last week, last two weeks. It's a small finish, but finish is a finish, correct? Um, I did change the pattern up a lot. But I'm pleased with the changes I made. I didn't use the called for floss. I didn't follow the pattern 100%. It's going to sit back here on my bookcase for fall. That is the pumpkin spice coffee mug out of the 2023 Halloween issue from Just Cross Stitch. I will put a picture right here of what it was intended to look like. And then I will put them side by side. Um, I like the way it turned out. I used some fluorescent floss to backstitch and I used a bunch of old and by old, I mean 20 plus year old, old, um, variegated floss that was hanging out in my floss stash. Didn't really have another use for it. It's a good way to use up old floss and I'm happy with the way it turned out. So I'll, you know, attach some felt to it this week and put it up behind me for fall and that'll be good. It's a small finish, but sometimes a girl just needs a small finish to keep going. Um, the frog has spent the last two weeks hanging out at my house and um, I am gladly evicting him from my stitching um, time and I'm sorry if he gets passed on to you but he has spent too much time in this household and he needs to move on so frog has been evicted I've shared my small I did get stitching done in the last two weeks in fact I have stitched more in the last two weeks consistently and quantity than I have probably all year. And I'm very happy with that. It's kept my fingers limber. It's kept me engaged. I'm going through, you know, I'm re listening to audiobooks while I'm reading it, while I'm stitching, or I'm watching, you know, British mysteries on TV, catching up on those. So it has been a worthwhile endeavor. Um, so 
let's start with a piece I didn't have to frog at all this week, and it's um there's only two pieces I can say that. So let's start with um, Jane Austen's bonnet. This is the one I really, really want to stitch. I'm not going to lie, but I'm not stitching it as much. It's in here weirdly, unfortunately. <sighs> okay. And there's a needle. I don't use needle minders very often. I don't like the way they weigh down my fabric. So if you were looking at the pattern, this is how it should go. Let's see if I can get it up close. But if you're looking at it on my, I can't see the camera. Um, scroll rods, that's how it looks. I love this piece. I love the way the colors are coming out. I love the variegated silk I swapped out for her bonnet. This is the piece that is calling to me every time I sit down. It's like, hey, stitch Jane Austen. My brain goes, no, you, you need to stitch this because it's a stitch along and you don't want to get behind. So mm, conflict sometimes is very real. I will get some more stitches in on, on Jane this in the next two weeks, but... I really, I already know what the focus is going to be because I'm, I'm behind on a stitch along and that's bothering me. So the next piece is my temperature quilt for 2023. It was going along swimmingly. I wasn't having a problem. I was catching up. And then I got to the end of March and somehow I'm off by three days. Again, I'm off. I don't know where, I don't know how. Um, and it's frustrating because I, I like the way it's turning out. So here's where I'm at and I'm off by three days. The, this last, this next row right here should have three more quilts in it. And those are the missing days. I don't know which days are missing. I don't know what or where they are. I was so frustrated that my husband, who does not stitch, does not have a creative brain, decided that I didn't know how to count or mark off a chart. And he was trying to be helpful and decided to mansplain cross stitching to me. It was rather funny, if not frustrating at the time. Um, and he's like, oh, go, you know, tear it all out, do it again, learn to count. I'm like, really? Yeah, I, 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 I've been doing this for, you know, 40 plus years and I don't know how to count yet. That was helpful. Thank you. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do for those missing three days, I've been thinking about this for over a week now, is I'm going to add up the temperatures in March, and I'm going to get an average for those temperatures, and I'm just going to take those three days and average them, take the average temperature and stitch those three days in the average temperature. And call it good and, and move on rather than trying to figure out where I screwed up in this pattern. I'm just not going to do that to myself. I, I, I can't, won't, because I, I like the way it looks. I like the randomness and the, you know, I'm enjoying the stitch. I, It's, it's frustrating, and I don't think I'm going to stitch that next year. I'm going to choose something that makes much more sense for my brain because this is obviously not Tammy brain friendly. Um, yeah, so. Um, 
So next up in the frog stitching nightmare that was the last two weeks for me um, is my Anne of Green Gables stitch along. It's, I don't normally stitch samplers and this is very sampler-esque, but I'm loving it and that, so if, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen this, this bottom blue line right here, right above the red. I somehow misread the chart and put it one line up and I had stitched it all the way across. I had done all this blue stitching right here. And then my brain said, oh, you have it one stitch too high. Frogged it all out, put it all back in. And all that frogging takes time. You know, that was a whole day of stitching and I frogged it all out. But, you know, I have Anne in, I have most of this blue line done. I need to finish the red and do all the top. And the second part of this stitch along arrived in my inbox yesterday, yesterday or Sunday. So I'm already behind. And if Green Gables is going to be my um, focus until I get caught up, I'm probably going to have to, you know, sneak in another, um, stitch or two just to break it up a little bit, but I, I, I want to stay current with that and get into the rhythm. So it is definitely my focus piece. I was going to stitch it yesterday and get, you know, caught up so I could start today with section two. But I did not feel good overnight between Sunday and Monday, and I wasn't about to start stitching a piece I was already, I had already frogged too much when I did not feel great. So I just did not stitch yesterday, and I am perfectly okay with that because it was, it was better to not stitch than to stitch and have to tear it all out because I, you know, was off by one. So I did have a new start. It's not really a new start. It's a restart. And that is um, Mother Nature Winter. I will put the finished picture right here. I have her face in. There's no back stitching in yet. And I did use the silky um, floss for her hair. And I love the way it came out. There is a close up. There we go. So this is the sulky is much thicker than a single strand of sulky is the equivalent of, I want to say two strands of DMC. And I have been stitching almost everything lately of, a single strand and, and loving the coverage of it. So this is thicker than I have been stitching recently. And so the rest of the floss that's going in here is going to have to be two over two to match the weight of the sulky. But I love the variegation it put in her hair without having to confetti stitch it. I love the blue tones. And so I'm stitching the other, I plan to stitch the other um, charts or mother natures of the four seasons. And so I will do all of their hair and sulky just so they all match that tone. And it is a fun stitch. It was going very quickly and I am looking forward to picking that back up and hopefully making some decent progress. So it all depends on how quickly I can catch Anne up or get to the point where I don't feel quite so far behind with Anne. And 
that will allow me to do other things. So we shall see. Other than that, I really didn't pick anything else up in the last two weeks. I know some of you stitch much faster than I do. And I feel like I'm so far behind, but then again, it isn't a competition and I stitch what I love, which is more important than, you know, playing keep up. So I did have a small finish that counts for something in my book. I have come to a resolution for my temperature quilt, so I should be able to start picking that back up and hopefully make some catch up time. It stitches quickly when I'm doing it, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, trying to think what else. I think that's about it. So I did have a finish. So that means I get a new start, right? Um, I haven't kitted this one up yet. And I can tell just by looking at it, I'm probably going to change the colors a little bit. But that's okay. I do that on every pattern. And that is I Will Always Be a Wildflower by Sam Sarah Designs. Here is the pattern. Can I get it in there? And this should be a fairly quick, I hope, stitch. I am... I have wanted to stitch this for quite some time. It, it, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to start this. My husband will yell at me because I haven't finished, you know, a big, but it's not really that big. It's, what is it? 118 wide by 119 tall. And there's a lot of empty space in that. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be pleased to know that. So that is probably what I'm going to start um, as a celebration of the finish. I should probably start a Christmas ornament, but uh, yeah, probably not. We've, we shall see. Let's see how my stitching goes and see if I actually, actually start it. So um, that's what I stitched in the last two weeks. I did finish a good audio book, so I will share that now i finished the daughter of sherlock holmes i will put a picture right here by leonard goldberg it is the first in the daughter of sherlock holmes mystery series it is a cozy mystery and i was incredibly pleasantly surprised it deals with the obviously daughter of sherlock holmes i think Sherlock Holmes adjacent universe books are incredibly hit or miss for me. I usually DNF most of them because they're too far left field. They're not believable. They're irritating. Any number of reasons they just don't work for me. So I went into this book with very reasonable expectations that I was probably going to DNF it. I am, did not only did not DNF it. I will be continuing the rest of the series. I believe there are seven or seven or eight more in the series. Um, it was an easy listen. The character of Sherlock's daughter is completely believable as Sherlock's daughter. She has that same cold, detached, always thinking personality, but she's a little warmer than short Sherlock and a little more societally conscious than Sherlock. And it was thoroughly enjoyable. And yeah. That, that's my easy book recommendation for the last two weeks for listening while stitching. I did listen to a couple of others. I DNF'd the other two that I can think of, so they're not worth mentioning. If you're curious, I will link the videos down below to my BookTube account where I discuss the DNFs for audiobooks. Um, the last two videos in my, or my BookTube. And I will let you know next week what I, you know, next video, what I listen to. 
I have no haul for the last two weeks, which is a very good thing for my husband. Um, there are a couple I'm looking at. He doesn't know that yet. It shouldn't be a problem if I decide to do them, but I need to finish something bigger than a small to get him to be on board with it, to be honest. And that's okay. I have a large stash that I should be stitching from and not buying anything new. So I should remind myself of that a little more frequently. And I do have plans to start a big one in my stash. I just need to sit down and figure out which floss I'm going to use. Um, for that project, I don't think it's going to be, I'm fairly confident saying it's not going to be DMC. I don't like the way DMC feels when I stitch. So I don't know what I'm going to use instead of DMC. So I haven't decided yet. We shall see. So that's it for floss tube number two. I thank all of you who have subscribed. I would love to chat down below in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you here next time at Stitcher's Flock.